What's going on, yo, Leaf Aquatics fam? John here. And today, I'm not gonna get too fancy with any edits or anything crazy in terms of the video, no script. I'm just gonna talk off the cuff about what I got going on in the two tanks and uh, what's in this bag and why I bought what I got today. Uh, so, I guess to start off, I'll talk about Norbert's tank, the five gallon beta tank. Uh, the last video I did, I had bought some auto sinkless catfish to help with the algae issue. And truthfully, they've been doing a really great job. So auto cats are a type of freshwater fish that specialize in eating algae. And I had a ton of algae on the glass. There's still a bunch in there and there's only so much that these guys can do, but they've basically at this point cleaned the entirety of the glass. And now they've begun to munch and work on the rest of the algae that is in the rest of the tank. So it's like an all you can eat buffet for these guys and they're loving it. Now in the mangrove tank, I'm so excited because for the past couple of months, I have been, I'm a saltwater guy through and through, and I have just been itching to get these things acclimated to salt water. If you didn't know, mangroves do have special adaptations that allow them to live in fresh or salt water. And when you go to transition them from fresh water to salt water, it is a bit of a process where you need to slowly and incrementally raise the salinity of the tank. Um, for those of you that aren't familiar with fish tanks, I used a tool called a refractometer, which is how I check the salinity of the water. Basically what I do is I take my little pipette, I take water from the tank, put it onto this tool, I close the lid, and now for this to work, you need to look at light. So I usually just look at the light underneath the tank or above the tank. And we're sitting at about 1.025 for a specific gravity, which tells me that the salinity is right where I need it to be. Um, and it's great because the mangroves have done an amazing job at um, going through this transition. They look happy. The growth has definitely slowed down on the mangroves, but that's okay. That was to be expected. They're going to be using some of their energy rather than growing to be able to not succumb to the salt water and dying, if that makes sense. So that leads me to where we are today and what my, what happened. So today is a beautiful Sunday afternoon and I didn't have a lot of plans. So I wanted to go on a bit of an adventure and I've heard rumors of this store called OSA. It's in Southern Rhode Island that uh, it's in Coventry, Rhode Island, which is where I live now in Rhode Island. And I want to check it out because it's, I've seen the posts online. I've seen videos of the store and I wanted to go check it out. And I will tell you this much, it was awesome. The second I walked into the door, I was like, this is an amazing store. I got to meet Scott, the owner. He told me that I'm more than welcome to come do a uh, store tour video. So that will be coming in the future. But the goal going down there, not only was to see a new fish store, but it was also to get what I have in this bag. So I'm gonna talk to you guys a little bit about this tank and the direction it needs to move in now for it to be a successful tank. Now, I feel like as a marine aquarist, I have been maturing and growing a lot these past couple of months, exponentially, really. I've been listening to a ton of podcasts, listening to speakers speak about marine aquariums and the best ways to keep them. Shout out to Rappin' with Reef Bum. If you guys are a marine aquarist and, or a reef keeper and you want some seriously good content to listen to, Keith on his channel, uh, Rappin' with Reef Bum, it is just filled with great information. And something that has been really pressed on me that I've been learning about, especially as a science teacher, is the idea of this like microbiome, okay? So we're looking at ecosystems. Essentially what we're doing when we have an aquarium is we're keeping an ecosystem in a box. And now as a science teacher, and I teach my students that in an ecosystem, you have different levels and they all build off of each other. These different trophic levels, which would be the, the way to put it, these trophic levels build and there's different organisms at each stage in the ecosystem. 
And I think a lot of times people who keep aquariums, they just glance over this. And what they do is they get the aquarium, they fill it with water, and they think to themselves, let me throw fish in here. I want fish. That's the first thing I want to do. But it wasn't until very recently that I started reflecting and saying, fish are cool, but that's because you can see them. There is just an entire world microscopically that we can't see that are so important to the success and health of uh, not just a reef aquarium, but any aquarium in general. And so learning from the podcasts I've been listening to, it's made me want to step my game up in terms of understanding and implementing into my ecosystems. So without further ado, I'll talk about what I got today. Now, I'll just pull all the things out and we'll talk about each individual piece. Now, at the very base of our ecosystem, the smallest little things, right? Bacteria. Bacteria play such a massive role in the success and health of any ecosystem, right? They are the foundational step here for microorganisms to be able to eat, for them to break down nutrient within a system. They just have such an important role. And so that is why when you cycle your aquarium, what you're doing is you're establishing that beneficial bacteria in your aquarium so that it can help with the success long term. So what I did was I purchased snails and I made sure to ask for a bigger bag of water because what I want is all that, thick. because this water, let's face it, is coming from an established system that is much more established than the water in my tank because this is relatively new. It just reached the appropriate salinity. And so now what I'm doing is I'm taking this microbiome inside of this water and I'm introducing it into my tank, okay? So that that's going to ultimately help the microbiome of my system so that I can be successful. So that's the first step is adding the water from an established system. The next thing I got was this, and it doesn't look like there's anything in this jar. And that's because there really isn't. But what I asked the uh, gentleman at the store to help me with is on the back of their tanks, there's a particular type of algae, okay? And it's called coralline algae. Coralline algae is that characteristic purple algae that grows in reef aquariums. And you typically know that you have an established healthy reef aquarium when you see that purple algae encrusting and growing on your rocks and on your glass. And so I asked for a scraping of that off the back of their glass and I'm gonna add this to my system in hopes that this will help further establish the tank because let's face it, we have bacteria. And then another step in the ecosystem would be our algae, right? Our plant matter, which is typically at the very bottom of our ecosystems is plants, our producers, okay? And so this is going to help us establish our tank. I do want to take a second and just make sure my video is still recording because that would be a disaster if it wasn't. And it is, so we're good. The next thing I have is this bottle. And again, you can't see anything in it, at least from your angle. But if I look, I am staring at these tiny microscopic organisms and these are called copepods. There's different species and varieties of copepods, but what they are is they're very microscopic organisms, right? They're like tiny little bugs. And these marine little bugs, what they do is they are detritivores. They help eat the waste that is in the bottom of the tank, right? Any leftover um, stuff that's there. So they are a pivotal part of this ecosystem as well. So I'm 100% going to be adding these to the tank. And then lastly, I couldn't go to a coral store and not come home with a coral. And so what I got was this pulsing Zenia frag. Um, it was very affordable, really awesome piece. It's a soft coral. And corals, their microbiome on their bodies is built from like benefic their relationship with beneficial bacteria. So by introducing coral into the system, that's going to help establish the tank as well. So I'm really looking forward to putting this piece in here and watching it hopefully be successful and grow. Pulsing Zenia is really cool because they're these soft, uh, soft polyp. Um, they're softies. They have a soft body. Uh, and what they do is their filter feeders and their mouths and their tentacles open and close in the flow as they uh, 
grab things from the water column to eat different bacteria and um, various things of small sizes that the coral can ingest and eat. So all of these are going in the tank. And then if we were to go one step further up the trophic level, then also we have the snails. And the snails are gonna help with um, algae control on the tank uh, and just keeping the tank clean. And then as you continue to move up, then we have our you know, fish, which we'll get to eventually. And then the mangroves also play a role in this system in their own unique way. Uh, but ultimately this is the stuff I got today. OSA awesome store. They were super helpful with getting everything that I needed today. I highly recommend the store. I'm looking forward to doing a store tour in the future. Um, but without further ado, I'm going to go add this stuff to the aquarium. It's not going to be overly exciting. I'm just going to be basically pouring bags of water into the tank. Nothing that you as the viewers can see. But I want to share these very fundamental, foundational things and why they're needed to be successful with the aquarium. I know this was a bit lengthy of a video, um, but it was filled with good information. At least I like to think it was filled with good information. And it's very important information for those of you that are looking to start a reef aquarium. And if you want to do it correctly and you want to add things at the very microscopic level that are going to help the success and longevity of your reef aquarium ecosystem. So thanks for tuning into this video. This is just kind of like a tank talk update. Um, again, nothing exciting, but I have a bunch of ideas moving forward in the future for what I can do um, for content for you guys to all enjoy. So if you tuned in, thank you so much. If you gleaned anything out of this video useful, I would really appreciate and love um, for you to comment and tell me something that you found interesting that was cool or helpful or, um, you know, shoot this video a like and uh, subscribe to the channel because it's viewers like you that are the reason why I'm doing this, that people that are enjoying watching my, um, my channel come together and grow. And I'm so excited that you guys can be a part of it. So go ahead, hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care.